December 30th, 941 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. Good morning, Max. Oh, yeah, good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Is that Regina? Teehee. Yes. Don't get me nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. R Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie! My sweetie pie princess! God, you're creepy. You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did. Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that? So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess, you'll fly at the end? Uh... It's not that kind of show. <laughs> Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Hmm... Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today I'm just a member of the audience. F fabulous uh, Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. God, no he's not. He's gross as hell. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? It's up of the morning to ya. Everybody, let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo. How low can you go? M Mo. Top of the morning to you, governor. Uh, top of the morning. That's the ticket. Attacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm, but then again, worms like higher brain function. Ah, 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 ah. Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. Oh my, thanks. So how are you today, right? Well, I've got the feeling today I'm gonna face off against the real culprit. You mean Acro? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line. Literally. He's got guts to spare. All I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is. I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like any other witnesses. What are you gonna do then, Nick? I guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. Today we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro into the truth. You're right, but it's gonna be tough. Anyways, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes, that's why I brought her here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. Wow, Mo, that's really dark. Dude, <laughs> December 30, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, Ms. Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? V have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eye witness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Order, order. I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, V are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Poor gumshoe. Very well, please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work. Or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. It's Acro. Name and occupation. Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at the very big circus. Where were you the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. 
If you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. It's more like, okay. It was just after 10 p.m. and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then, a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. Hmm. This witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth did. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Ms. Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? May I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. Very well, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Cross-examination! Do, do, do. Okay, so I think we need to press somewhere. The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window? The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. But maybe there was something fishy with his latest bit of testimony? Yes, yes, he had the silk hat, and he had already left, and as we know, the silk hat was left at the crime scene. There is a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm, she's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim of contradiction? Yes, the silk hat. You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it in Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That... that's the ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? No, this is a handmade, one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Akbo, that you've been fibbing on the stand. <laughs> Okay. Order, order. As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? It's the real culprit. That's the answer. We got there pretty quickly. Your Honor. On this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion? Uh, accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Duh. <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. Ha ha ha. I think your trips to the circus have served you well. 
You seem to have learned how to try and grab it in the audience's hearts and minds. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by three. Swayed? Swayed by theatrics. Trying to vow the crowd, Viv Smoke and Mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. R really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. He's calm enough for it to almost be scary. Hmm. He is staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. Th that's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of a murder of all things? See, even a sliver of common sense makes it clear the accusation is ludicrous. She's right. Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man. Phoenix is a poopy head. See that, Mr. Phoenix of Right? If you're trying to drum support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Uh, I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note that confirms that Acro is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to count as this as well? I can hear the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Acro have an accomplice? No. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of this mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to suck me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Oh, order! Order! What the? What are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick! Now I'm gonna have to prove how it all fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Barry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. Alright, then let's do it. Mr. Phoenix right. If this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm, Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? Well, it's pretty simple, right? He can't leave his room under- he can't get out of his lodging house under his own power because for some reason, despite having been in a wheelchair for six months, he still lives on the third floor of the building. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, he could have moved to a different part of the lodging house so that he wouldn't need help getting out of his room in the wheelchair. <laughs> Anyway, he was in his room. He was obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room? Pretty simple, eh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you proposed is impossible, yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there is no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Hmm, you've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Most of that he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm. How did he do it? That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here... She's right, I can't mess up here. I've got to give this one some serious thought. I'm sure that Akro killed the ringmaster. And he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. 
Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna present some evidence. So what did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? Okay, so... Basically, you have to figure out more than, like, a bunch of information here that is kind of opaque, in my opinion. Uh, but basically what happened was, uh, Acro dropped something heavy on Russell's head from his room. And the something heavy that he dropped is this. Which is why it looked like Max was there. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust, and because it is life-sized, it is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. St story is in third story is spelled with an E. Ah! See, this is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. They love making bust jokes, don't they? Order, order! So you're saying the bust fell onto the Ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly veal a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible. Well, Acro is an acrobat. He should have had more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well, Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Acro. You can't run away from things this time. Ow! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that V get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? From Karma. She's just using this testimony as a... As a rouse? You mean ruse. N not a rouse. A ruse to store for time. <laughs> there is absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't you say things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thanks, thanks, Francisco. Thank you. Ugh, that one will sink to any low to win a case. Acro's physical state. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat. Only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? Hmm, I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd just like to proceed with a cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Ugh, I can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. Okay, so Acro is correct. Uh, like his phys like he he is actually you know disabled. The wheelchair is not fake or anything. He he definitely could not look out the window and hold the bus at the same time. That's all completely true. The problem is that there is actually a way he could have known the location of the ringmaster's head because of a certain other mysterious piece of evidence that's been sitting in here for a while, which is this box. You might recall this box, despite being almost completely empty, is really, really heavy. Which means that to pick it up, you would have to, you know, bend over and pick it up with your knees properly. 
which means that you'd have to be in roughly the same position regardless of where you came towards the box, which means if the box was put there by, say, a murderer, then when you came to pick up the box, it would have to be in a logical place for your head to be for dropping a bust on it. <laughs> anyway, Phoenix is about to say the same things I just did, so let's go ahead. Also, yeah, this case is... Yeah, this, this is another thing people don't really like about this case. The logic involved in this part of it, if you haven't already played the case, is really, really tenuous. Um, thankfully, I have already played the case and know this stuff, so it's not too bad for me, but on, on like a first playthrough, it takes a long time to figure out. Anyway, Acro. You didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I might add. Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling, how about you show us some evidence? But I did such a good job hinting. Yes, 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 hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over? The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bust came falling down, it was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bust were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. No! Order, order, order. This is unbelievable. Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going, and there's only one way to go from here, forward. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Allow me to vip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix, right. Ow, ow, ow! The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. S specially made? Indeed. Wait, hang on, who made this box? Like, we have, we have to explain later on how Acro got the bust into his room, but how did he get the box into his room? That never comes up. Plot hole! It had the most peculiar feature. The box has a ra remarkable, no, the box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down and lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. You, you Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bus? Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm. Then what happened- then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bust from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bust from the cafeteria to my room? 
You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Ugh. It's actually very simple. Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep, well, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happened once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bust from the cafeteria back to his room? Okay, this one is really simple. This monkey steals things and takes them to Acro's room. The bust is shiny. <laughs> monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, on his own and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? <laughs> but the bust was... This was, was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. <laughs> hang on, hang on, no, she's German, so instead of gwa, it'd be va. <laughs> Acro! Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. It's interesting that somehow Acro is the right height for the witness stand, despite being sitting in a wheelchair. Like, he's not on a platform or anything, he's just somehow the right height. Order! Order! I said order! Ms. Von Karma! Where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, 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 I, um... I don't know. They're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Then you mean this bust was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Akra saw money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron. <laughs> Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't seem so far boozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix, right? And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah! I mean, it's obvious what happened, right? The, the, the bust was spotted. Because the, they thought it was Max, because it's a bust of Max. There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. Then the murder occurred, there were but two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the ver who was the murderer the clown saw? It was the bust. Take that! It's clearly the bust. He saw Max's Ow! I ask, who was the other person Max saw on the scene? That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frere. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Notice that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Uh, uh, how is that possible? It's simple, really. What I actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? <laughs> the silhouette he saw was bearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. 
It would be easy to hang one off, the, off of the cards in the boss's hands. Idiot, who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bus? It doesn't matter who put it on the bus. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? That question is of, of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? Oh, he caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Bright. Who put the cloak on the bust? This is pretty simple. It doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense if you think about it. Again, it's one of those moon logic things, but Russell did it. Fool. Kim? You were saying it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. And what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself. Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright. So you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Echo used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night? But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance to the lodging house, by none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Akra took a chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant the bust hit the victim. That's what happened. You vape just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Ms. Wankama. This circus isn't over yet. What? impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. That impact also caused the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mokurl, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Akro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because, in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. <gasps> magic! And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro, it could only have been you. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced his vivora the long binded pale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence, and the power of my vip. <laughs> Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay then, use that and get us out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you've unraveled the trick to this magic case. Okay, I wouldn't really call this hard proof, but we need to talk about Max's three symbols. Because... 
as you might recall, although Ben saw all three symbols, Mo didn't see the roses. And if you watched the animation a little while ago, you can see that the roses ended up on the back of the bust, whereas the cloak and the hat were visible from the front, which is the side that Mo was looking at. So yeah, it's pretty simple. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses? Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white rose, white, the, the white, bro, white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool, do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the busts. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in court. He said that he witnessed bite roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown says to me doesn't match. The clown said that there were, there were no bite roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course, I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the incident when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses wound up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Order! Order! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick, then maybe Von Kahn will finally throw in the towel. Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the, ring the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Acro's story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Acro deeply respected the ringmaster. Akro's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after reset. recess. Recess? Recess. This court will now take a ten minute recess. To be continued. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. You might be able to guess Akro's motive already. I know what it is because I've played the game before, but... You might be able to guess it too. Boop. Anyway, yeah, we'll finish up the case next time. Thank you for watching.